Today, I'm gonna to share key insights from my favorite business book, Company of One by Paul Jarvis. Specifically, I wanna talk about the foundations that you can build a successful and profitable business on without having to sacrifice your health, without having to give up all your free time, without having to burn all the relationships in your life just for the sake of the hustle. You have my curiosity, but now you have my attention. If you're the kind of person who loves books like The 4-Hour Workweek, you're gonna enjoy this book too. So what exactly is a company of one? Is this for freelancers or solopreneurs or a one-person business? The answer is no, it's not that. So whether you run your own business or you're part of a larger organization, Paul defines a company of one as someone who goes about their life questioning growth. It applies to anyone who operates from the belief that you can build your business around your life to serve your life and not the other way around. Now, before we get into it, I really wanna emphasize that company of one isn't about anti-growth. It's not anti-profit, anti-revenue, or any of those things. You don't have to give up all these passions or interests that you have or anything that you're pursuing that maybe is a little more materialistic. Materialistic things? Company of One is about intentional business building, and it's about building a business that you can use to go the distance through your life without crashing and burning, without disappointment of burnout and frustration. One of the reasons I absolutely love this book is I feel like it's the perfect antidote to the hustle culture narrative that's been shoved down our throats. It's part of every nook and cranny of business conversation. It's seems. I've been finding myself having more and more conversations with business owners and entrepreneurs lately with people who are specifically hitting the financial milestones. You know, if you look at their bank account, they're making more money than they did when they worked at their jobs, for example. But when you look at their quality of life, these people are often feeling burnt out. They're feeling exhausted. They're feeling like their relationships are falling apart. Like there's no sense of work-life balance to be found anywhere. It's enough to get me to the boiling point. So many of us who face this burnout, for example, the worst part is that because so much of the content for business owners and entrepreneurs is tailored to the the climb or going the distance and winning big, there's not really anywhere you can go to have a conversation to explore what does it mean to build something that's meaningful, something where I can thrive at it without compromising on my core values or without giving up on the good things in life, like my relationships and my health. So how does Company of One shine a light of moving past business burnout in a way that you can actually build a business that's enjoyable and not just another hamster wheel that you've built for yourself and now you're trapped on? For most people, when you ask what they're working on, they'll say, oh, I wanna make more revenue, or I'm trying to get more clients, or I'm trying to expand and grow my team, or I'd like to grow my office to be in multiple locations, things like that. Now, rather than just following growth for growth's sake, Paul suggests taking a moment to look inward and to define what growth means for you so that you can set it as your true north waypoint on your own journey of life. And I want to state quick that as you start exploring these things and as you start diving into like what matters to you, it's really important that you do not compare your success to anyone else's definition of success. Now, I feel like the real challenge for us once we've actually defined what business growth means to us and what is important when it comes to pursuing growth is to actually focus on becoming better, not bigger. Because when you actually look at what getting bigger means and what growth in that context means, it often doesn't lead to what you actually want more of. So for example, if you work with clients, do you want to spend all your time working with more and more clients, filling up your calendar with more meetings and more schedule? Or do you want to learn how to become better at your craft so you can command higher rates and work with less people through the year to hit the same revenue target? If you're only focused on constantly growing, you're eventually going to hit the ceiling and realize that growth just means more responsibility. Things like managing client expectations, managing payroll, managing employees, juggling more emails than a single human being needs to have in their inbox, constant meetings, on and on and on and on. One of my favorite quotes in the entire book is around the concept that often this thing that looks like opportunity is really just more obligation wearing a fancy mask. That's where it leads to one of my favorite parts of the book where Paul talks about this psychologist whose name is Wayne Oates. And in 1971, he's the guy who coined the term workaholism. Oates did extensive research and found that hustlers don't actually outperform non-hustlers. And the only noticeable impact of their hustling is increased stress, a greater imbalance with work-life conflict, and deteriorating health. His research found absolutely no correlation with working your face off and a financial reward on the other side of that. Okay, so we've established that chasing growth for growth's sake is not a good strategy, but it's also important to remember that growth is not necessarily a bad thing. We just have to look at it through the lens of what matters to us and leading us towards the type of life that we want to live and the quality of experiences in the work that we do that we want to experience. Remember, the choices that we make at the end of the day is around making our business serve the needs and goals of our life, not the other way around. So if the theory of constantly getting more doesn't have to be the answer, let's explore what it means to get better instead of getting bigger. So there's this stat in the book that was shared by this company called Small Biz Trend, and they found a staggering 83% of business comes from referrals. <gasps> 
If you really take the time to grasp this point and understand the value of referrals and the value in doing better work and focusing on mastery, that's where things are gonna get really exciting for you. In fact, it really pisses me off when people start crapping on referrals and they say, oh, that's not a reliable way to build a business. It's usually from people who don't have a lot of experience working with clients and providing amazing services, or it's from people who are trying to sell you some bullshit course on how to run Facebook ads to get customers or how to build these complex funnels with all these softwares and tools that you're gonna pay for and other people are gonna make money, but not you. It's usually from people who are spending more time trying to hide behind the computer instead of creating amazing experiences for people in the real world. Heck, I can even talk about my own experience of taking a digital product business from zero to seven figures in two and a half years. The majority of our customers came from word of mouth and referrals. We actually spent a lot of time and money tinkering with Facebook ads, over $100,000 trying to dial it in and find the magical formula for getting customers where you put $1 in and get $2 out as they preach and promote. And the crazy thing was that I don't feel like it was actually as profitable or as successful as just spending the time focusing on how can I curate a better experience for my audience and how can I focus on helping my customers, the people who pay money to me and trust me with their money to help them get results better, more effectively, more efficiently, or with ease. The real fascinating thing is that we never ran out of customers. There were always people who wanted to sign up for the next batch of group coaching or to be able to go through the course with a like-minded group of people. And by focusing more on that word of mouth, that referral, and by being better instead of bigger, that's where the potential really lies. So the last thing I want to talk about from this book is around the topic of building a business that you're passionate about. You've probably heard things like, oh, if you're doing things that you're passionate about, you'll never have to work a day in your life or things like that. And I hate to be the person to rain on the optimism parade, but the thing that Paul brings up in the book and the thing that I've found from my own experience is that passion follows mastery. Let me paint that picture for you. So I want to share a quick story about a customer who reached out to me yesterday and shared an audio message with me that they had just hit their first six figure year. This is a really amazing and exciting milestone for someone, especially as a solopreneur, self-employed guy who's been doing this for a bit of time. And then being able to say that like I was a part of helping him go into that journey of hitting that milestone, like that's going to change his life forever. The excitement that I had, the passion, the fulfillment, the feeling of like, man, I want to do more of that. It only came after I had spent the time working with him. It came from the transaction of him signing up for the program and from us focusing on how do we make this experience really awesome for him. I'm not gonna find passion before I start doing the work. So it's really important that you understand Passion follows doing the work. It follows the mastery. If you're trying to figure out how do I build a business that's for my purpose, just know that purpose simply means how can I use my gifts and skills to be of service to other people? There's too much of this big oorah emphasis on the word passion or purpose-driven business that it often makes us overthink things and as a result, we don't take any action that leads us towards building a business that serves our life. Look, there's 222 pages in this book and there are so many lessons and valuable pieces of insight that I could share with you. This is the most earmarked book of any book I have. It's got the most underlining of any book on my entire bookshelf. I love this book. And if you're interested in building a business that serves your life rather than being stuck building this business that you're trapped and a servant to, then grab a copy of Paul's book using the affiliate link in the description down below. Lastly, if you enjoyed this video, leave a thumbs up and hey, leave a comment at while you're at it down below. I'd love to hear from you, like what stood out the most from you as you watch this video. I'm gonna do my best to respond to people who write in the comments, so I can't wait to hear what stood out to you. Till next time, my name is Marcus Rideout, and I hope you have an awesome day.